Welcome, everybody. Uh, hoping you're having an amazing day, uh, just beginning or ending, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, me and Holly are both representing uh, separate hemispheres. So, uh, you know, good morning to Holly, good evening to me. Uh, so please let us know in the chat where you are, where you're joining in from. Would love to, would love to know. Uh, the chat is open for you to say hi and uh, ask any questions or, um, yeah, share anything uh, with us, uh, as is the Q&A section. Hi, Tiana from London. All right. So it's just about getting evening uh, around the air. Um, so yeah, we're waiting. I see people are still rolling in. Uh, California, nice and sunny, I hope. So good morning, the air. Um, amazing. So guys, keep uh, keep the chat. Portugal, oh, gorgeous. Uh, all right. So a couple of things. Um, I'll start with the admin as people are joining because I know I'm uh, I'm probably going to get this question more and more, but we will have a recording. So the session is recorded. We will be sending it over uh, so you'll be able to go back to it. Um, and welcome to our fourth webinar in our masterclass series about decoding social media analytics. Um, as you might know, I, I'm pretty sure some of you have been in previous sessions as well. Um, I'm Noah from Planable, uh, the social media scheduling and collaboration platform. And we set out to talk about analytics and really dive into separate uh, topics and different areas of analytics, trying to make it seem a bit less scary uh, and help us uh, understand what we can do with all the information that we're getting. Uh, and today's topic is going to be reporting, which I know is a very big part, right? Like you have all of the data, uh, you kind of figure out where you stand, but how do you get that all in a nice uh, presentation in a nice way? And how do you share that with the, your clients, with your stakeholders um, and kind of align yourself with their expectations and um, yeah, all of that. Um, and to help us answer all of this is Holly, Holly Hoadley. Um, she's the founder of Creative Solutions, uh, which, well, she'll tell you a bit more about it, but it's an agency that supports businesses and organizations with, you know, strategic guidance on their growth, on their sales, uh, branding, messaging, and uh, obviously also social media. Uh, reporting is, you know, a big part of what they're doing. Obviously, they have to go back to their clients and let them know how everything is doing. Um, but yeah, so without further ado, I'm going to um, give it over to Holly that is going to take us through her presentation today on reporting. Um, my last thing I'll mention, the chat and Q&A section are open. So please feel free to put in your questions or your comments or your uh, share your thoughts. Uh, and we'll make sure we have time at the end for to go ahead and answer them. So welcome, Holly. Thank you very much. I'm going to start sharing my screen at the same time and move some things over. So as Noah said, we are a, uh, an agency. We've been around for a little while now. We'll go over that in the next slide. But we are a creative thinking agency and we do implementation and we focus on human to human marketing. So our entire role as an agency is to focus on the people uh, behind the companies, as well as people behind the actual customers or clients. So that's that human to human touch that we may or may not cover in this particular uh, webinar. So today we're going to be talking about how far are you are your stakeholder expectations from reality. We'll see that they're very different, uh, but we also will see how we can bring that together. And we're going to choose we're going to close the gap through reporting. So let's get started. So my agency has been around for 10 years. We have a team of 12. It fluctuates between 10 and 15 at any given time, depending on the project, but we do have a 12 consistent. We work with all different sectors and our formula for what we do through service design and through user experience and that human to human marketing uh, direction we have the same formula that works for all different industries. So I know a lot of people will say to niche down or to niche down, 
and I say, no, I don't want to do that. Thank you very much, <laughs> because it's our approach that's the niche or the niche. Uh, the way that our, our sectors happen doesn't matter to us. It could be anything, any types of business for us. So that's just a little bit about creative solutions. So today we will learn about understanding your stakeholders' expectations and what matters to them. We might have our own ideas of what we think matters to them, but because we've been in business for so long, I've been in this industry for over 25 years, but I have my own agency for the last 10 years. Um, they're very different things when it comes to stakeholders' expectations and what matters to them as opposed to what we think matters to them. The role of reporting in what you're providing, our impactful reporting framework, we're literally going to give you our framework. It's like a checklist. And, and as Noah said, these slides are going to be given to you as well. So you can take this checklist and run with it, or you can um, use your own checklist of how you do your reporting and just implement maybe some ideas that come out of this. It will give you also an exact delivery process as well as um, how to ensure that it is heard and seen. We'll go over that a little bit too. And then we're going to talk about how to ensure alignment and address any gaps that come. So if you're noticing that you're reporting and no one's really talking to you or stakeholders don't really mention anything, there may be a gap there that we would like to address ahead, address ahead of time so that there's no issues in the future. Now, let's understand these stakeholders' expectations. You can call them clients, you can call them customers, you can call them stakeholders. We want to know what matters to them. So back in the olden days, <laughs> I don't know how old everybody is here, but it doesn't matter. Back in the olden days of social media, this is like Facebook era, kind of almost Instagram era. Uh, yeah, we've been doing social for that long. There was a very different approach back then than there is now. So stakeholders, there was a very little offered in the way of reporting and stakeholders didn't really care too much about reporting. It was like social media was just this really cool thing to do that no one else knew how to do that we're like, well, wait, isn't this the same thing as networking? Isn't this the same thing as just doing marketing and it's just a different platform now? So we were able to jump in a little on the early side um, to understand how what the nuances are per different type of platform. And we're still learning every day. Obviously, those new platforms that pop up every day, there's threads all of a sudden, there was Clubhouse that just came out of nowhere and disappeared the same day. I don't know if anybody uses Clubhouse. But <laughs> if you do, good job, keep going. If you don't, welcome to the club. Um, it's a little bit of a different approach now. So now what happens is stakeholders actually do care about your social media efforts because they're like, what am I paying you for? And you're like, you're paying me to do a job that you can't do or you don't have time to do. You're not paying me to do sales for your entire organization, which we'll also talk about their expectations. So what they want to know if, if all the effort is worth it, but they often lump in marketing efforts with everything else. So in your comments in the chat, just, you know, put a little thumbs up if you feel that they, a lot of your clients are asking you to do everything. If they're asking, I'll go over a little bit in the next slide too, if they're asking you to do sales and marketing and video editing and content writing and website updates and it, all the things, a lot of the time, yeah, mm -hmm, I hear you. I'm hearing all of you, th like thoroughly. <laughs> so this is what happens a lot of the time, especially freelancers, right? So if we're in their freelance role, companies just go, well, you're my person now, and you're going to do all the things that I don't have time for. And you're like, dude, I don't have time for this stuff any either. You pay me to do social media specifically. Let me do that thing. Um, so I know I feel your pain, been there, done that, stop doing that. Uh, if you are finding clients are asking for those things, you're just going to remind them a little bit. I'm just going to remind them a little bit of what's coming up. So with stakeholders expectations, they're usually out to lunch. They just want you to do all the things and all of those things doesn't matter to reporting. You can't measure 
how many uh, how much admin you've done. You don't measure how uh, many clients were brought in through your video editing job and your website updates. There's a lot of you can't measure, but when it comes to social media, specifically when it comes to reporting, what they want and what they're expecting from you can be totally different of what you can actually provide or what you want to provide. So you're the expert, right? So another thumbs up if you're the expert. Actually, do you like a clap? You got a clap? Who is the expert in this room? Y'all are experts in social media. Stay there, right? We want to stay in that little, that little bucket. If you do find yourself as being like a Jack or Jane of all trades and you're like, but I, Holly, stop. I love all the things. Good. Do all the things. Just get paid for it. Make sure that you're getting paid for what you're getting hired for. You're not lumping everything into this word social media. It's a really big difference of what their expectations are and what you provide. And then when it comes to reporting. So you're the expert and you should only measure and report on what has been agreed upon. And this all comes down to communication in the sales process. So you're going to step back and go, if, if you're noticing there's a scope creep and there's uh, all these clients are asking you like, well, tell me how the ads are doing. You're like, I don't know. I don't run ads. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm doing social media stuff. I'm doing organic social media. You're doing content development. You can do, um, you can actually create content. You can create it through something like Canva. You can uh, use AI tools like Planable to write captions. You can get your hashtag research done. Um, you can even do the videography and the photography as well if that's part of your package and what you offer. But if you're doing organic social, you're also doing community management. You're doing um, like reactive and proactive community management. You are um, assisting in like online customer service. That's social media. That's organic social. If you're also running ads and you're running, you know, meta ads or um, if you even get into the space around Google, Google's not a social media platform, but you can get into that space as well, then you become more of a digital marketer instead of only social media marketer. So just consider that. Like, I'm not saying like, don't do all the things because I love doing all the things, but make sure you get paid for it. I will get off my TED talk in my, <laughs> right now. <laughs> so typically when we have clients thinking about a certain way, they're like, give me all the things and do all the things. Um, you want to go back and you want to say to them, let's set some goals, right? So I, I, I know that in a couple of the other webinars as well, we talked about goal setting. Let's set some goals. These things on the right hand side are all totally different things. So what happens is a lot of the time, the stakeholders expectations are setting goals with you as their right hand person or their left hand person. I did right, but I meant left. Yeah, anyway, um, when they think that you're their person, they want you to help them set goals. And what you want to do is you want to set those social media goals, but then they're going to say, I want a thousand new clients. And you're like, I didn't know I was in sales. <laughs> um, here we go. So you're going to go back to them and you're going to say, let's just talk about this for a second. Let's start at the top. What are your overall business goals? Let's discuss that first. Do you have specific sales goals in mind? Your business goals could be something like freeing up your time in order to take on more clients, or you want to run five new campaigns this year, or your overall business goals would be to be more efficient. Those are business goals. Those could be operational. They could be um, sales goals. The next one is the actual sales goals. If they, if you're not talking to your clients about their business goals, their sales goals, and then their marketing goals, most of the time what's happening is the clients are lumping all of this together. So we want to break it down for them, like a dance move, like break it down. So you want to break it down for them. So you want to say, what are your business goals? Thank you. Check. You say, what are your sales goals? How can I support you in your sales goals? Your sales goals, I'm not your salesperson. Your sales goals are converting leads into sales. So how many people do you need coming through all of your marketing efforts 
to reach the sales goals that you have? And what is the percentage of close rate? This is getting way too technical. I know, don't fall asleep. I promise it's gonna get fun. So sales goals, if they say they want 10 new clients every month, you're like, cool, what's your, what's your close rate? And they'll be like, I'm 100% close rate. And you're like, no, you're not. Is you're probably 60%. So you have to bring in that many more people through leads generation activities in order to reach those sales goals. So now they're like, wow, you're really smart. Let's talk about this. Now you're going to say, how about your marketing goals? And they're going to say, that's your job. And you're going to be like, no, it's not. It's actually, <laughs> it's a conversation that a business usually has. When you talk about the overall marketing goals, then you start to think about what kind of campaigns do you run? Even further from campaigns, there's the marketing goals down to campaigns. Then we go down to tactics. So remember, we're only one little peg of the entire stool. All we're doing, hopefully this is everybody's in the same boat, what we're doing is the tactics, and one of those tactics are social media. We may be up doing other things like uh, networking events, um, ads, uh, it could be SEO, it could be website updates, blog content, it could be um, directories, uh, joining associations, there's a lot in the marketing space. Some of that stuff is going to be digital, which social media falls under that digital tactic. But you can see that business goals, sales goals, and marketing goals are the high level foundation of business operations. When you get to the campaign, you can help and assist with those ideas. So maybe every month you run a new campaign and the tactics are what deploys that campaign information. One of the tactics, as I said, is social media. So you're part of that stool, you're gonna be doing the social media portion of those tactics. And now you're going to be reporting only on the social media specific tactics that you're doing in order to look back at, does this fit the tactic? Does this fit the campaign? and the marketing goals, as well as the sales goals, as well as the business goals. There's so many levels that you have to decide whether you're going to report on or not. So setting goals for each of these doesn't have to be you. It doesn't have to be. It does have to be the stakeholder or the client. But your job is to set those goals for your social media. What stakeholders expect are all these things. What you're going to do is set just the goals. Anybody feel uncomfortable with this? You can put an emoji like a little wiggly face, like mm, scared emoji if you'd like. If you feel like this is on par with how you wanna, you wanna see your business growing, you wanna see you serving your clients, do a thumbs up. That's what we wanna see. We wanna see a thumbs up to say, this is all I needed, Holly. I needed you to just set me straight and be like, I'm not doing all the things anymore and they're gonna pay me for it. And I'm gonna only report on social media. So today we're talking about social media reporting. So that's why I really wanted to hone in on only the social media reporting. Now let's think about goals for social media. And this is my opinion. So everybody has different opinions out there. And if you are in agreement with me, that's awesome. If you're not, then we can just fight afterwards. It's cool. So overall social media, uh, goals or goals of organic social media, in my opinion, is to be seen, to be heard, and to be found. So your content, you can be seen with that content and with your hashtags and, and with some other things that we can talk about. Be heard is showing your point of view, right? So you have educational content, you have engaging content, you have um, inspiring, promotional um, there's a lot of content you can post about to really showcase the business itself, right? So who you're, who you're, um, who you're trying to target and then be found is community management. So have you guys ever heard the statement, like post it and they will come all the people will find your post magically on the interwebs. Yeah. Um, so that doesn't happen. So what we do instead is, uh, we don't post and ghost. And so posting and ghosting just means you post your content, you now, if someone comments, you're like, nope. <laughs> if someone asks a question, you're like, didn't see it. 
So reactive community management is spending time on the social media platforms to be able to answer those questions. So really great customer service opportunities. And then the other side is to be found is going to like networking events, but like using like Instagram or TikTok. And so what you're doing is you're getting hashtag searches, you're doing geotag searches, and you're actually finding people using those hashtags and that those geotags and you're interacting with them. So if it's like on, on like in person networking, but you're doing it online and you're just building this, this visibility, you're building this thing that no one knew that you existed until you said hello and you walked into this networking event, which is Instagram and you are saying hello, shaking hands, which is liking their content. You're asking them a question, which couldn't be a comment. And you can also send them a DM, which is here's my business card, holler at me. So this is a way for me to measure social media, organic social media efforts is be seen, be heard, be found. So five examples of specific social media goals you can start to measure would be something like build brand awareness, there's increased customer service opportunities, build community of advocates. So those, those strategic partnerships that you can align with online. Increase website traffic. So we can measure those as well. And generate content ideas for posts, videos, and blogs. So you can say, well, due to my social listening, I actually found three new articles based on people asking questions online. I found that and I can I can say that I found that and that's my number three. And I'll try and increase that next month. My goal is to increase that next month. You can get even more specific, really granular in this space. And that goes for like your, your marketing goals and as well as your sales goals. This here for social media specifically, I like to use SMART goals. And I'm sure you all heard of these SMART goals before, but you want them to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, or timely or time bound. And you will be getting these slides as well, so you don't have to like write furiously or take screenshots at this point. So you'll be able to do that later. And here's an example for you on how to take this general goal, like the ones we talked about, to build awareness, increase customer service opportunities, build community of advocates, and increase website traffic, to have them now as SMART goals. So we can increase profile visits by 20% from 2023 or month over month. You can decrease response time, your response time, by 50% from 2023. These are great goals to, to achieve. You can partner with five new micro-influencers each month. Again, it depends on where you're going with it and how you, how you approach your clients, but you can also have 100 new website visitors each month, specifically from Instagram. So now that you have these SMART goals, you can start to run campaigns around reaching these goals specifically for social media. So when we talk about measuring efforts, there's a lot of the times, you probably heard this so many times, ROI, ROI, what's my ROI of social media? What's my ROI of organic social? Um, I don't really care about that. So in my opinion, an ROI stands for return on investment. A KPI stands for key performance indicators. So in my opinion only, and there's a lot of opinions out there for this, but ROI to me means that you've paid for something for a specific campaign outcome. So you have run ads, not the management of ads. It is you've paid for a click, social media ads, any sort of ads targeting and retargeting ads, direct mailers. You can say, I paid for this, I'm going to send it. I'm gonna hope that I get a return on my investment. It's radio ads, TV spots, um, sponsorships. You want a return on this investment that you've done. So social media and some other uh, tactics that you're running, you can't, uh, in my opinion, you can't measure the ROI of that. Because most of the time when they're paying someone to do organic social media, they're paying you to just do a service. So I usually come back and say, well, tell me, Jimbo, what is your ROI of your business card? And they'll say, I don't have one. And I'm like, I know, right? Because it doesn't exist. It's an organic thing that you've done in order to have that conversation or start those conversations 
you're paying us to do a job for you like an administrator or like a video editor. You can't ask a video editor what their ROI is on the video that they've edited. There's a lot more that goes into it. There's your marketing, there's your brand strategy, there's your brand identity, there's your usable language examples on your website. There's like a whole other spot where we have to go, we can't measure ROI on an investment that you've paid for. What we can do though is measure key performance indicators, which are things like organic social media, website traffic, specifically on the organic side, you just go to your website and go, well, yeah, this is how many people came, but these are how many people came from ads. This becomes the ROI side of things. Networking is another KPI that you can measure, um, strategic partnerships, email marketing, marketing management, any type of management. So that's a KPI that you can measure and you can you can always fight back and say, listen, it's not really an ROI. I would call this a KPI and then see how they, they react to it. So the overall role of reporting is to have objective data that allows for alignment, improvement, and an opportunity to close any gaps. So this is between you and the client. So you want to be able to sort of prove to them that you're kind of awesome and that they should keep you going. Um, and here's what you're doing for it. So this is your opportunity to collect that. So social media reporting is really to show the progress of KPIs. It's to show how they measure up to your goals that you've set, your SMART goals that you've set for your social media measurements and to keep stakeholders' expectations aligned. So this happened to us a while ago too where, uh, I'll, I'll save that story for two seconds. Mm -hmm. So this leaves no room for gaps in communication. I'm going to go back to the last slide. So when you're doing these things and you're showing the progress of the KPIs and how um, they measure up to the goals and you're keeping their stakeholder aligned, their, their expectations aligned, you're really just closing that gap in the communication. So if this is our impactful reporting framework. So this includes when and how to deliver your reports for the greatest impact. And this has taken us, like, I'm sad to say, but like 10 years to do it right. Let's say nine years, because last year I feel like we, we, we nailed it. <laughs> we nailed it pretty well. So here's our outline of how we do our reports. So we just make them in Canva. It's just like a little template that we do with the cover page and the name of the client with like the date. Uh, it's usually like the month and the year. And then it'll be a little out, the next page is a little outline of the goals, a little reminder, a little like a little nod. So our, our goals are to be seen, be heard, be found. And here are our specific goals that we talked about before. Then you'll have another slide saying key insights and takeaways. And the titles will be what went well, what we'd like to see more of, improvement opportunities, and then next steps that you're going to do to improve those um, opportunities. Then we get into community building opportunities. So that's where we do our screenshots of community management. So all of the customer service opportunities, as well as the proactive conversations that we started. We take screenshots, receipts to make sure that uh, they see what we're doing. Because they're like, our social media is not working. You're like, what? You're only posting content. Let's do community management. The other one that we do is link to a spreadsheet showing a month over month comparison stat. And then we do top content per platform and a summary of uh, what this shows us. So we have screenshots of top content and we'll say something like, based on this, we know that we should post more of blah, blah, blah at these specific times a day because we did a testing and this worked best. However, you wanna do your measurement for that. Um, community growth, so that is followers or um, connections, and then a thank you page. So the thank you page also below says this report aims to elevate the effectiveness of the marketing campaign, assess the marketing response, and identify key opportunities for improvement. So that's just another little nod at the end to say, this is what we're doing. We're not doing your sales. So what we used to do, uh, so embarrassing. Okay, so what we used to do is we used to just send an email and be like, here's your report, <laughs> that's it, thank you. 
And uh, you can just imagine how well that went. And if you're doing the same thing, you're going to notice a big change if you switch to the way that our process is. Because clients, some of them don't care. Like some of them are just like, cool, I, I need to pay for someone to do social media. It's working. Good job. Whatever. In their minds, what they think is working could be, I got two calls. And you're like, no, but look at all the followers. Look at all the things that we've done. This is so great. And uh, so what you want to do is a little bit of a different approach. So this didn't go very well for like nine years, like legit. So we were just like emailing him and we were like, okay, no one's saying anything. And then a client would just like leave. And you're like, what happened? We were doing so well. And then after when you do your handover meeting, you realize that they didn't even like look at the reports. And you're like, bro, I spent like two hours on that report. How could you not look at this? This is gold. There is an alignment issue. If no one's reading the reports, Maybe there should be a different approach. So this is what we did instead. So we book a monthly meeting, especially with the first three months, and then we walk through the report. So we don't go through every single page, but we like we just discuss the key insights and the takeaways so that like what went well, what can be improved on next steps, all of that stuff. After the meeting, and this could be like 30 minutes, just a little quick, like, hey, what's up? You good? You good? Good, wonderful. Is there any ideas coming up this month? What you got going on? Do you need any support? It's just that touch point that just, just solidifies your position so much more. It's phenomenal, the difference that we've seen. So then afterwards, then we email them the PDF after the meeting. And after that, it's, it's perfect. We can even keep them in like a folder on Google Drive and send them the clients the link so that they can see month over month as well. But they also have that spreadsheet. Huge different. I just said all of this stuff. So future ideas showcase how awesome you are and how how well you're doing with the goals that you have set. How to align, how to ensure alignment and address any gaps. It comes down to like this is just be, me being honest with you. This is, comes down to communication. Like I know it seems too obvious, but it comes down to all different types of communication and it all starts at the sales level. So when you are doing your sales to a potential client, you need to set some really strong expectations so that they don't lump you into that whole role. Um, and otherwise like just become a full-time employee at that point. Right? So if you are working with clients, you want to set some real strong expectations right at the beginning. So there's also ongoing communication opportunities like setting your SMART goals and your KPIs and always reviewing them. So you want to do your own review as well and see how things are going. You want to be open to feedback. Yeah, you know, nobody likes it, but <laughs> and I don't like calling it like criticism. It's literally just feedback. Uh, creating a space where stakeholders feel heard. So when you do those meetings with them to go over the report, you talk about ideas, you talk about, you know, things that they could do. Maybe you have like 10 real ideas that you're like, you should do these videos and they, they then will have that communication with you. So that you want them to feel heard. You want to encourage collaboration during those meetings as well. You want to manage their expectations, even if they, this happens a lot too. Even if you feel like you have been so solid in communicating all this, sometimes clients just left field go, well, I heard we should be on TikTok. And you're like, your, your clientele is 90 years old. Like, why would you want to be on TikTok? What are you talking about? But it's managing those expectations ongoing, like forever, legit. Um, learning from your insights and your reporting and then adjusting as needed. I'm telling clients appreciate it so much. If you find something and you're like, you know what? I tried this thing, didn't work so well. I'd like to try it again in two months if you're open to it. Adjusting as needed is also that creating a safe space for the, the stakeholder to feel heard and then encouraging collaboration and being open to feedback. The more open the communication, the less gaps there are. Reporting just gives you receipts. I got goosebumps. I don't know if you did. That was really cool. Um, so reporting just gives you receipts. It, it closes up those gaps and there really is no room for miscommunication at all. All right. So we're going to open this up. Noah can come back on screen. Yes, also, I'm here. Screen here. There we go. Amazing. That was so insightful. And I love how 
Well, you tied it in with a bunch of uh, things that we talked about earlier. And, you know, I, I'm i sorry if we sound like a broken record, but it all starts with setting those goals, making them super clear. And, you know, it helps you focus, right? That's what we were talking about a couple of sessions ago. Uh, but then also obviously helps um, your customers, your stakeholders have uh, be aligned on those expectations. Um, so everybody, the, you know, the Q and A and the chat are open for any questions or thoughts. Uh, and I have a couple of questions already here. Um, I want to start with just a very quick one. is isn't really about reporting, but you mentioned and somebody asked, what's a geotag? You, you talked a bit about networking. And since you're the expert today, if you could just quickly kind of answer that for Amy. Yes, Amy, great question. Actually, I get this one a lot. So there's two things. One's a geotag, which is this little thing here if you can see my screen yeah this yeah. is instagram right so we know geotags it's just like location based that can be searchable as well and then the other side of that is let's take that idea and just turn it into a hashtag that technically is a geographic location hashtag so if you're in new market ontario use the geotags that those wording that wording as a hashtag as well amazing yeah. Um, Maggie said, um, asked, you said a report costs you about two hours. Um, is that the report you do every three months or once a year or the monthly one, something? Yeah. Is that two hours every month or how often is that? Yeah. So it used to take us like three hours, a client literally to do reports and we were searching forever as no one knows. I just... Mm -hmm literally was searching forever for a reporting tool that would cut some time down. And we just haven't found it yet until, honestly, until Planable has come out with this reporting tool. So I am super looking forward to the reporting for the yeah. Planable uh, analytics. I think that'll cut down a lot of our time. What we do spend a lot of time on is that month over month spreadsheet per KPI. We also spend time on doing um, the screenshots. So in the past, we were doing a lot of like how the content is doing. And that's really not like our, in our agency anyway. It's not what people pay us for really. Like we do the content, but community management is really what they pay us for. So we had to start getting receipts for that. And now we're like, you know what? Let's keep having these meetings and we're cutting down even more. So the two hours is cutting down even further, thankfully. And we do this monthly. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Um, great. Uh, somebody, sorry, seems like geotag hashtags are taking over a bit uh, uh, of the topic <laughs> today. But somebody just asked, is it literally just hashtag New York or do you have to put anything else? Uh, but I think it's just literally hashtag with the location, right? Or... Yeah, so the way that we break down our hashtags, okay? So in our, when we're doing our social media plan at the beginning, when we're working with a new client, we break down hashtags into like three sections. One is a descriptor of content, just a descriptor of like the business or the content. The second one is um, we focus on our services, like the, the client's like service or product and what we feel people could use to search for those products and services. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit convoluted to say. And then the third one is ge geography, specifically geographic hashtags. So when we do our hashtag research, we start to see um, which hashtags are performing well, which are like medium and which are like low in, in the results. And we pick from them all. And so it could be, for instance, like digital marketing, it could be new market, digital marketing, or just new market or uh, hashtag York region or hashtag new market Canada, or so there's these configurations, how you put them together that we would keep still under the geographic location hashtags um, so that we can use them and pull from them at any given time for the content that we're going to be using. Hopefully that answers. So. Yes, it can be literally Edmonton, or it could be Edmonton dentist, or it could be YEG, or, you know, it, there's a lot of configurations that you can use. Um, that's how we would pull from the content. Yeah, I think that answers it. I would say uh, 
I, it's just bottom line, uh, any hashtag that contains a location and you just look for those that have the most, uh, yeah, that are the most used. Uh, did you laugh at what Heather mentioned about? I love the hashtag being that? dead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay. 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 Technically, yes. Hashtags are technically ish dead because you can start searching for things with, with just words, like keywords instead. But hashtags are still relevant because they're clickable. Keywords are not clickable in content. So while hashtags are technically in the new world dead ish, we still use them for search. So when people are on a piece of content and they're like, oh, who else is doing like, you know, New Market Ontario, people can click on that and see everybody's content. Yeah. All right. Let us get back a bit to reporting. There's a couple of questions. Questions are just flying in. So trying to keep <laughs> up. I'll start with the Q&A section, but I see the ones in the chat. We'll get to them. Don't worry. So we have a question here in the Q&A. If you can talk us through the main metrics you include in your report uh, and any time saving tips. Now, obviously, I would guess metrics are very much tied into those goals that you set up. But if you have like some examples um, that you often use for your clients. Yeah, I do. If you give me one second, that's a great question. Um, so the type of things that we do is correct. It's based on our goals that we have. So if some people really care about follower count, we'll make sure that that's highlighted, big time highlighted. We want to make sure like we, we match their goals. So the other one that we do is the month over month growth, which is this link. I'm not going to share my screen because it's a client. So, um, no, what I might do is just send you a little screenshot of like the actual, um, the column. Yeah. So what we measure for like Instagram is like new followers, content interactions, reach impressions, profile visits, website clicks, and total followers, total followers. We keep as total followers. We don't do like new followers because it, it goes up and down all the time. Um, Facebook, we do new followers, new likes, uh, page engagements, post reach or page reach and page views. And then it sort of like trickles from there, depending on if it's like a LinkedIn page um, or a personal because there's no analytics for personal and then also Google business profile. So that one would be like page views, calls, website clicks, um, that kind of thing. Amazing. Yeah. Somebody asks if, uh, how do you combat conversions based off of views and link clicks? Uh, is there a way you tell your, they said boss, but I would say client in this case, that the point of social is a stepping stone to bringing in clients. So I think kind of, how do you make it clear that social media is a stepping stone to those sales and business goals, but still keeping them aligned and clear on how much social media can bring or how, um, let's see, how direct the connection between what you're doing in social media and those sales can be. Yeah, I, this is, we get this all the time and it's, it's very common for clients to say, I just want sales, bring me sales. And you're like, oh my gosh, like we're not your salespeople. So the way that I explain organic social media is there's an opportunity for us to do great customer service that may lead to potential sales. But if people are coming to your website and there's a disconnect and your website's not converting or your website doesn't have the opportunity for them to click to call or to fill out a form, then you can't blame social for not bringing those people. So you can use specific links that are trackable like bit.ly links. And so if you use those metrics instead, you can then show how many people, quote unquote, you have driven to the thing that they've asked you to drive people to. Social media, organic social is not supposed to be a conversion tool. It is supposed to be customer service, brand awareness, a touch point, a conversation starter, um, awareness. Uh, there, there's just so much more that social is. Now, when you start to go, but are you running ads? And then I can say to you, I can, I can track that. So if you want organic social to be your entire business model for lead gen, it's probably not the best spot to be. You're probably better off to do campaigns based on ads if you want to track that ROI and that conversion metric um, to do ads or to do outbound reach. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, just tell them it's a it's an inbound type of conversation. You are the starting those conversations, but you cannot guarantee leads at all. Uh, I think again, great way of putting it. Um, you know, Kylie, she's the one that asked the question before that we were just discussing, and then she added sort of there are a lot of times where they get asked why link 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 clicks are not converting to leads, and I think you put that beautifully. Like, so organic social media is not for converting. So I think having a discussion with the client or the boss or whoever it is and explaining that to them. Uh, Holly did that beautifully. Again, you're going to have the recording. So I think feel free to quote her. I hope that's, <laughs> that's okay for me to say. Um, but yeah, uh, somebody <laughs> said, um, if you have just one post a week for a client, should you also do a monthly report or can you go a bit more? Um, yeah, rarely, like every three or six months. Is there any recommendation there? That's a really good question too. So the way that I see one post a week, was it right? A week, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So to me, and this is, tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong here, if it's one post a week, I'm assuming that their budget is constraining that, that effort. And so what they're saying is I have limited budget. I'd like you to only post a minimum of once a week. And I want to know how that's doing. So you can say due to your minimum budget, like the, the minimal budget that you have, I will not be doing reporting for you. So what we will do though, if you want, is to increase the budget to include reporting as a secondary option if you want to see how it's doing. But I'll tell you now, and this is me talking to your client, but I'll tell you now that uh, posting once a week is probably not going to bring you much. It's just to be consistent and to be um, found if, if people are searching. So if they want you to do more community management and customer service opportunities and doing that outreach through something like Instagram or TikTok, um, that, that increases the cost as well. So I would say stick with your base that you're doing. I would not do reporting for once a week for sure. Cause I mean, it's not gonna show too much. And then from there, you can say, even if you want to mess around and you can say, well, I posted three times that week and it increased by this amount. So like you want to increase your budget or like, you know, <laughs> and then you then you ask them as an a la carte service, we can do reporting for you, but it'll cost you $100 a month or whatever you want to do. Amazing. A couple of questions here. I had one question that I thought was uh, interesting, prepared, and I promise we're going to get back to the ones in the Q&A. But one question I had, I was very curious about, um, should clients, stakeholders have access to the numbers themselves? Uh, or is that something that you prefer to kind of, you know, keep it away from them in a way and just <laughs> report it in the way that you want it to, if that makes sense? So technically speaking, all clients that have access to their accounts do have access to the numbers. They don't know how to find them, which is great for us, <laughs> but they technically have access to it. So they can go in and check whenever they'd like. It's just not going to mean very much because when you do your reporting, you basically like do like a storytelling in a mm -hmm. sense. So like, and, and the clients will look at the numbers and go, well, I don't know what it means to me if 50% of my audience is female or whatever. So your storytelling and ability to um, read the analytics and provide uh, direction and clarity based on those analytics is what they would pay you for. So let them have access. Don't matter to me. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I think that you're totally right. It's not you're not just handing them, uh, you know, a sheet with numbers because that, you know, they could technically get them themselves. They rarely do, but they could. But it's about putting that in context. Um, yeah, giving them the story behind like why those numbers are the way they are. What did you do? Do they align with their goals? Reminding them of those goals, as you mentioned, consistently and so on. Um, we're going back a bit, uh, something you said earlier about tracking links and bit.ly. Um, so people, somebody asked, um, why would you use bit.ly links if you have Google analytics and, or using links with UTM tracking? Is there a specific reason for that? Yeah, that's a good question too. So UTM tracking is great. You don't need bit.ly links if you're using UTM tracking. If you're only using Google Analytics, Google Analytics have changed since July of last year to have GA4 and they have very specific 
guidelines as well as social media guidelines about tracking. So a lot of people will turn off their tracking for social media purposes. So you're actually not getting real numbers from Google Analytics any longer. It's done. So if you have a specific UTM or Bitly, like some sort of tracking code, even if it's a QR code, whatever it is, um, those measurements are true. Your Google Analytics measurements are no longer true. And even the dashboard doesn't even show you all the different social media places that your traffic came from. You have to do a custom dashboard in order to find that information now. Amazing. Uh, you talked a bit about paid ads. Um, is there a way you're using them to better understand your audience in any way? Somebody was asking. Um, is there, yeah. Are you using those for audience understanding at all, or you're focused more on the organic and community management? So when it comes to, that's a good question too. So we do run ads for clients, like it's a little bit of a separate division for us. So mm -hmm. we do um, so organic social media. So that's like our, our social media managers. And then we have our ads department, which runs ads. So they, their goal is sales, mm -hmm. all sales. We do some learning from that for organic purposes. Like when it comes to ads, it's it's clear cut for us. If there's an ROI, you make adjustments as you go, you see what ads running best, you do some user insights based on, uh, you know, if people are going to the website, what do they do on the website? We can do heat mapping on the site through like Microsoft Clarity, something like that. Mm -hmm. And you can see where they're going on the site. Yeah, we do learning from that, but we do it from a user experience perspective. Mm -hmm. So we look at the whole experience of why they came from the ad to the website and something didn't convert. So if it's doing well, there's no insights to, to really learn from it. We can use maybe some of that, that uh, wording and conversion topics, things like that for organic social like the content. Uh, but we don't usually merge them if that I, I hope i'm answering the right question for you but that's how we would approach it our ads are very much for sales not for learning you know or like likes or things like that mm -hmm. and our organic social is for those community management opportunities got it yeah. i have two more questions and i think that'll pretty much be you know us wrapping up but really appreciate like all the excitement and all the curiosities um, we, as I mentioned, we'll be sending over everything that we talked about today. So you'll have access to it. Um, okay. This question came up about which software do you recommend to automate scheduling for reporting? Uh, yeah, scheduling and then reporting and analytics. Uh, I know you mentioned, you know, right now you're designing also your reports in Canva, um, but are you getting your data natively or yeah? So, so far, like this, I know we're on, this sounds like a little sales pitch at the end here, yeah, but I, I honestly, honestly. <laughs> the question came through. Um, and also, you know, I, I don't know if we mentioned, but we'll be, it's no secret. Holly is a planable user for quite a while. <laughs> so, that. so yeah, that's part of, uh, part of the, I would say tool stack that you're using. Yeah. So planable is our bay <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> scheduling and client communication, um, anything to do with content, it all goes through Planable. We don't touch any other platform. Um, when it comes to reporting, up until Planable came out with their analytics and reporting, we have been using uh, Canva with native, like within the apps um, numbers. So we, we have used so many, and I've, I've talked to Noah about this for a couple of years now, and we're like, we're using so many and it's annoying. So can you guys just do analytics, please? And so, <laughs> I mean, I don't think I'm the change maker in all this, but like, I feel like I'm pretty important in this. You right did. Now. You definitely nudged us. I'm not going to lie. We finally oh. listened. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah. thanks for sharing that. Um, all right. Uh, a cup. Okay. Our last two questions, just because we want to be mindful of everybody's time, uh, but love the engagement, honestly. Um, Holly, I hope this is not too far, but maybe we could include also your LinkedIn so people can connect if they want, uh, you know, connect further and, and uh, get some more of your input. Um, so 
going into demo data about your followers, um, are you, you know, kind of going into meta business suite for that or anything else? Uh, they were thinking about like details as like education, income, you know, what sort of interests do they have to kind of, I, I would guess also, you know, inform what type of content they would like and so on. So we don't use it. So what we do is um, we do persona investigation. So because of our UX background and service design background, we actually go a little bit further into the um, user's profile based on our experience as well as the data that shows us separately. So what that means is we look at things like um, their wants, their needs, their frustrations, um, how, where they're, where they, where they, we should market to them, what type of people they are, what type of music they would listen to. We do all that investigation ahead of time. So we're not using these, like we're not using meta. I don't really find it's accurate. So I'd rather do a guesstimate based on best practices and based on the way that we would um, get, gather that information. So there's actually an AI tool. Uh, is it okay, Noah, if I mention this yeah, AI course, tool? Because I yeah. just led with it and I was like, wait a no, minute. No, no, no worries, there's an, honestly. <laughs> there's an AI tool called Founder Pal. So Founder and then P-A-L. Um, it's a persona investigation tool and it gives you those exact things. So you write in like what type of business you are, what type of cl customers or clients you think that you might get or you currently have. And then they create that type of, um, chart for you. So that chart tells us even more information, especially with their, their wants and frustrations, you can create content around that. The other thing is when you're doing social, you use it as a listening tool and you're asking if people have questions. You can also go to something like Quora, Quora, Q-U-A-R, oh, I can't remember how to spell it, Quora, anyway, see it. Um, there's Reddit, there's Quora, there's Medium, and you ask questions in there and see what answers come out or see what other questions people may have based on keywords. So it's like a dentist and you're like, uh, you go to these platforms and you type in, you know, what age did my teeth fall out? I don't know. I'm sorry. That was the first thing that came to mind. I'm sorry. Um, people are asking those questions as well. And so you can see if there's answers or questions and then see which ones are the most popular. There's also answer the public, which you might, all of you might have heard of too. So answer the public is another one you put in keywords and it, it's just spits out all these questions that the internet has. So those are the kind of things that we would use to create content. And we also use like Instagram stories to also ask questions with polls and with, with the question stickers. Amazing. Well, this has definitely been very informative, very educational, uh, and I, I think very helpful if anybody wants to quickly raise their hand if they, uh, you know, learn something new or got some confirmation. Tiana, thank you so much. Amazing. I see a lot of raised hands. Uh, you know, even if it's just confirmation that you are on the right path or that uh, you should continue doing things the way that you're doing and, and you know, communication is key. You said it, we say it, everybody says it. So uh, we we really hope this was helpful. Thank you so much, Holly, for your time and your amazing presentation and sharing so many insights from how you're doing things and being so open and honest of what you've tried. And, uh, you know, not everything was perfect from the beginning. You, um, you had to find your way to the way that you're doing reporting right now. But I think um, it's, so, it's so valuable for everybody. Uh, that you share that with us. Um, all right. As I mentioned, we'll be sending over the presentation, the recording. Holly, if you're able to send us those screenshots just of the metrics, somebody uh, wanted to make sure if those will be included. Um, and yeah, we'll be sending that over to everybody in a couple of days. And we're getting close. Well, we're getting to the end of this masterclass. We have one last session next Thursday, same time. Although I think daylight saving time is coming anyway uh if you register you get a calendar invite and we'll trust that uh, but we'll be talking about analytics tools and how do they get their numbers why does it sometimes look different than the native numbers uh and really kind of peeking back behind the curtains of how they all work so yeah hope to see you then as well and again thank you holly so so much uh for joining us thank you everybody
Have a good rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye.